Remember when 3D Gaussian Splats came out and it just blew your mind? Well, there's a new kit on the block. It's voxel based and it's called SV Raster. And in this video, we're gonna dive in and give you a first look at the technology. And I guarantee this may be one of the replacements in the future for 3D Gaussian Splatting. So let's jump into this review and see what SV Raster can do. Basically, it's a new method for doing a radiance field. So instead of 3D Gaussian Splatting, where you use 3D Gaussians, we're gonna use voxels. And what are voxels? They have a really good picture here. So if I open this in a new tab, make it nice and big, instead of representing everything as these football shaped ellipsoids that have a, a Gaussian distribution, we're gonna represent a whole scene with an optimized grid of Minecraft cubes. And so some of these Minecraft cubes will be super small and some will be really big. And that way you can make it work really fast and you only have to have voxels where there is predicted to be an object. So you don't have to render a bunch of stuff where there is nothing. And that's a that's an intriguing thing because it's a way to represent a scene. They're gonna be view dependent voxels and it can be really fast. And if I move down here, they just, again, it kind of just talks about how it works a little bit. One thing they wanna point out is that it doesn't have popping. And what does that mean? If I make this big, you can see in 3D Gaussian splatting, like the way the Gaussians move in and out of the scene, they might pop. One moves in front of the other. In this voxel grid, the way they they order everything, nothing pops. So you don't have this artifacts of things popping, which I'll show you when we get into a live demonstration at the end of this first impressions video. So if I come back down here a little bit more for those nerds who really like the numbers, you can see that again, the frames per second is really fast. So it's in the same realm or faster than 3DGS, depending on what variant you use of SB raster. So you're gonna have super fast rendering, but it's gonna train in a whole lot less time. So on my computer, I'm seeing, I'm taking between about nine minutes up to like 15 minutes. So it's quick. And your quality of your results here should be very close or similar to 3DGS. Uh, coming down here, the last thing I wanna show is just some comparisons where you can see things are like almost the same. And in some ways, like the grass on this one looks better, but you know, the proof's always in looking at a scene. So everything looks really close. And that's exciting because you know you're not gonna have a huge improvement, good or bad, but sometimes they show these with cherry picked results. So we wanna look at some of our own results as well. So if I go up to the code, which I'm really excited is available, thanks to uh, the NV Labs, uh, you will see that it is really easy to install, but there's a couple of gotchas. And I'm not gonna go over how to install this completely. I'm just gonna point out the gotchas for the people who want to install it themselves. Um, so first of all, it says PyTorch and Conda. I got it to work with uh, CUDA 12.4 and PyTorch 2.5. I'm sure you can get 11.7 working, but that's like a really old version of CUDA Toolkit. I don't, I don't really suggest it. Um, but if you do want to install it yourself as well, uh, you want to make sure you install it on Linux or WSL2, which I did. So if I go launch Ubuntu, I can come here and you can just Go here, I already have this all set up with CUDA Toolkit and everything. I will make an install video eventually, but um, basically I just have a Conda environment with SV Raster all enclosed in it. If you've ran any like 3DGS as well from code, it, it feels just like you're running that. You'll see some of the same Python commands, but if you wanna build it yourself, then also you can go to this notebook. This was a big help for me the first time. You can see they created a Conda environment. They called theirs SVR Jupiter. I called mine just SV Raster. And you can just kind of follow their instructions on how they installed it. And this should work for you as well to get everything going. But you don't need to use the Jupyter Notebook if you don't want, so you can kind of skip some of this. So eventually I will make a video on how to do this. Um, the next gotcha is um, now you wanna use your own images. It You'd have to prepare your data like any other of these projects. Um, I'm surprised if anyone's still running Instant NGP and has that cool map to Nerf, but um, that would work. But I use Nerf Studio. So if you have the Nerf Studio NS Prepare set up, the only gotcha is when you run that, you have to add this at the end of your command. So if I go to the Nerf Studio instructions, they're going to tell you this. They're going to say NS process data. You can use images or video, the data, the path to it output directory. And at the end of that, you want to make sure then you add this camera type pinhole because it needs it to be a pinhole type camera and it will reproject to that. Um, so pretty easy. 
Um, and now when you're done, we get down to scene optimization, which is really training the scene. So again, since this is a, a first kind of reaction video, um, I'll just show you how this works. Basically just gonna copy that first section and then your source path. So I have a folder uh, called data with a subfolder with an imagery of a castle. Uh, I want an, an output. So the model path is where it's gonna go, your, your output. So basically you're gonna go like that and I'm gonna call mine output slash castle. And if I go to my folder for, I see you have this Linux and Ubuntu folder with SP raster, um, you can see I have a data folder with that castle and it's just got a bunch of pictures of a castle at 4K resolution from a drone. A couple of things you need to do then when you're optimizing it is pick a bound mode. If you leave this off, it'll pick default, which is great. It'll just decide is all your cameras facing like a single forward direction or is it going to pick the, the meridian, like the middle of the camera? So you can read through these and pick the right one. Um, and then the last thing is you can you can do these other things. So we can get mesh out of this. So you're going to want to put this in for better geometry. Um, they have uh, this thing if you're doing an outdoor scene. So you're going to want to use that. They also have this save quantized version, which makes it a smaller size it says by 70 percent um that might be intriguing as well so i'm just going to run this and just give you an idea what it looks like when it's running it's going to downsample my imagery load everything in and um it's going to start training so it's pretty quick you can watch your psnr start to go up you can watch your loss function but your iterations I i'm running an rtx 6000 ADA. so if you're running um like a rtx 5080 5090 you probably be even getting better results than this. I have, I think the equivalent about like a 4090 as far as speed, but I'm already a thousand iterations in. I notice it always does 20,000 iterations. We're not gonna sit here and watch this train. I'm gonna kill this operation and we're just gonna visualize it. So if I go back down here, you can measure the frames per second that you got out of there. You can um, render a fly through, which I'll show you, but what we really care about is this visualizer. So I'm gonna go down this Python visualizer like so. And then I'm just gonna pick the location of the output. So again, I showed you those castle. That castle is the scene that we trained on. So it's gonna uh, load this up, and now we have an interactive viewer. First thing you want to do is move your width slider all the way up, and then give you the highest resolution this viewer will do. And you can see it looks great. It doesn't look amazing, but as you start to move things around, you notice everything kind of feels like it's on a tilt. So the first thing you'll need, or the second thing you'll need to do is click this little toggle here, go to your orbit tool, and you're just gonna wanna align this up a little better. So I think that looks uh, pretty close. Look, that looks good. And then um, now things aren't on that tilt. So I gotta make sure I turn off the origin tool. I can go back. And so now I got this nice scene that is leveled. Pretty easy to do. And you can see the details look great. They're not gonna like blow your mind. There's no popping. It's not a, like a good scene for showing that off, but overall I think it's pretty detailed, but I'm getting a hundred, what, 120 to 140 frames per second and I'm running this recording software. I've seen even faster depending on the scene. Um, you can change your spherical harmonics. It goes downhill really quick, but there's just things you can play with. You can change your clipping. And if I clip it, this is where you start to see the voxels. So you can see like the voxels that were in the inside which you don't really see are huge versus the voxels on the outside, which are tiny and look like pixels. So that's one thing I think is interesting is how it does that to optimize the scene and make it really fast. There's also no floaters. I've noticed this thing does a really good job at having no floaters. So that's a, a big pro to this output. And then you can change your, your, your modes. You can see what cameras you have. You see, I did like not a full loop, but a, a, a mostly a loop around this. You can look at your, your normals, things like that. So really interesting. So I'm gonna show you one more scene. So if I go click here, it's gonna load up one more scene. Here we go. And this is another good one as an example I did where it's already level because when I walked around it, the cameras were already pretty level around this. Um, this viewer is not like the best. I notice things kind of like wobble when I move it around, but I think they spent more time on, you know, they just picked a viewer that they could use and they spent more time on how the code works. So I'm just gonna hide these cameras. And so now you can see things look pretty sharp, but it's got this weird ghosting on the edges. So um, as I move around, you almost see around the edges of everything, almost like there's a, a ghost-like quality. 
and uh, it's fuzzy. I don't know what that's about. Like right here, it's almost like the edges, you can see it almost like it can't quite project where this is supposed to be. I don't know if that's just because of lack of views, lack of camera positions being correct or what. Um, something I'll dive into. I can also change parameters, but overall this is quick. Again, this one's running around 190 frames per second. It might be a bigger scene because of all these trees and things. Um, but notice again, I have no floaters. When I run this scene on 3DGS with this, there's a sun flare here. I get floaters all over the place and there's never floaters. I don't get popping of different artifacts. So it's very intriguing what you can get out of this. And, and again, to render a fly through takes seconds. So let me just show you a couple fly throughs. Um, I have this fly through of this castle and you can see it's really fast. I think it rendered this at 100 frames per second to render. So while this is a 10 second video, I think it rendered it in like seven seconds. There's another one here of the fountain, I believe, where it looks really good. So you can see kind of the ghosting in this as well. Um, but you get these really cool final renders that to me look really good quality. And then the last thing I want to show you guys is the mesh. So if I go back to this castle and I go to look at the mesh, the first thing you'll notice if you export a mesh is that it has normal no, no normals. So depending on the software, it might just look like this. And you're like, oh, this isn't anything. You got to go up to, in this software, compute your normals, compute, you do it per triangle, and now you can see it. So now this looks much better. You end up with this scene, and it's again, not the most detailed I've ever seen, but that's not, it's not photogrammetry. I only had one loop, but it is impressive of what it could do, and it, it created this mesh in like seconds. So not as good as Neuralangelo, doesn't take as much compute resources as Neuralangelo takes, but it does give you this interesting physical layer that you could use for game engines or other things. I hope this first look is helpful. If you like this format, I will do more. Tell me what you wished I had covered in this as well. And I will make a more thorough install video later down the line. If you found this content valuable, it will mean a lot to me if you subscribe to this channel because I'm trying to grow it. And if you subscribe, I know I'm making the right type of content that I feel people will find valuable. And there's a whole lot more I want to make on how to capture videos and capture imagery and generate these things and build different projects. But I need your guys' feedback. So jump in the comments, tell me what you think. And I uh, hope you guys like this and I'll see you in the next video.